So, I noticed something. There's many stages anime fans go throughout their lifetime. From the moment you realize, oh yeah, I like watching sweaty 40 year old men grunting at each other in CGI cause that's fucking fun, to watching an anime movie about two teenage kids trying to go at it. Your Name was an amazing movie and even though it had a lot of plot holes, it was great. I loved it, you loved it, but why? It's almost that same feeling you get when watching your favorite YouTuber play a game when you can go play that game yourself. As humans, we crave the idea of feeling something we have but never been through it. The idea of watching an anime about two high school students and their loving relationship and the many struggles that come with it at 3 in the morning is amazing. Knowing that you as the viewer will never experience something like true love in real life cause you're a loser and a suck up cause the one girl that you really love decides that she wants to get with your best friend Nove cause you know she is pretending to care about you and she is wanting you to buy her stuff and show her attention and <coughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track. Where was I? Right. Anime. It feels like there's an anime out there just made for the purpose of making you cry. And eventually, all anime fans go through the stage where they are tired of this fighting bullshit and want to watch something that will rip their hearts apart and have them staring at the ceiling at 3 in the morning thinking, what is life? I remember when I myself went through this stage and I went straight to YouTube searching top 10 sad anime to watch and coming across plastic memories and thinking, wow. This fucking sucks, but I want to cry so I want to see where this goes. Like would anyone remember Anahana if it wasn't known for being extremely sad? No. Fuck no. Now don't get me wrong, Anahana was great and all, but I can't remember anything besides the message it was trying to get across and make me cry like a little bitch. So with this new mindset, I promised that I wouldn't cry to anime that looks sad and clearly just said the tiger and the fish was another one of those animes set up to make you cry. And I wasn't going to fall for it. Well, guess what I did at 3am, definitely not cry about how single I am cause I'm definitely a ladies man, ha ha, ha ha, peace out. By chance, a young boy finds himself walking home in the middle of the night and happens to stumble upon a girl who lives her life tied to a wheelchair. He is offered to become her carekeeper and agrees. Tied together by chance, this is a story about a girl in a wheelchair and her servant ready to face the real world. <laughs> My attachment to the characters didn't have to do with the fact that I could relate to them, but because I couldn't relate to anything. Sune is a normal college student enjoying an easy lifestyle while working a stable part-time job who seems to have everything in life going well for him, which makes him likable and he's the kind of guy you want to be friends with. Now Jose starts off as a chick who makes you wonder, man. Who the fuck is this bitch? Disrespecting my boy Sune and biting him. I don't see how I can possibly be attracted to a person like this. The girl first comes off as a cocky little girl who thinks she's the shit. But the more you get to know her, you start to realize why she is the way she is and she's just as emotional as anyone else would be. Making you question the different perspectives that everyone goes through and that just maybe, just a little, you might have a thing for girls in wheelchairs. Like yes, hit me with that drive medical viper plus GT wheelchair with universal armrest, elevating leg rest and an 18 inch seat. The longer you watch, the longer these characters start to become more real. And what this movie lacks in plot, it makes up for an investment. You realize you can't relate to these characters in any way but are gonna stick around and watch cause you are too devoted to see where this goes. Suddenly you start to realize that their ups and downs become your ups and downs. In a way you can feel the value of this movie in every second the characters spent together, giving a really, really nice experience. While the first 10 minutes had me struggling to stay awake, the last 30 demanded me to stay awake. Besides me bawling like a little bitch, the ending was very satisfying and very unique. Now I won't say this anime is perfect cause it really isn't. Jose the Tiger and the Fish is an amazing movie but compared to big movies like Your Name and Silent Voice, it doesn't come close. Think of Your Name as Jennifer Lawrence and Jose the Tiger and the Fish as Kylie Jenner. No, I don't want that mass produced shit. Do you know what happens when things get old? I need me a Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -mm -mm. Your name had such beautiful things and believe it or not, it's the little things that matter. Your name made me feel like I was there and had me screaming every second of the movie interested in seeing where this might end up. While Jose the Tiger and the Fish isn't a masterpiece, it has something that a regular street anime doesn't which is a message. Often you hear make every second count, stuff like that. 
but I've never really felt it before and never have I ever taken a lesson from an anime to such a personal level. You know, tomorrow could be my last and my time is really valuable. While others don't have what I have, why do I complain? Just said the Tiger and the Fish was a slow burning workout. It made me feel like I lost and gained something with such a beautiful message. And when it came to the end, I cried and I cried and then finally I laid back on my bed for a bit. Then I jacked off and went to sleep. <laughs>